Welcome everyone to the Honest Review. Today we're going to be looking at the new king of 240 hertz monitors and what will undoubtedly become the most used monitor at all the esports tournament events. Now we did previously review the BenQ Zowie XL2546. Today we're going to be looking at the newly updated XL2546S. And yes, the S stands for Saiyan. Okay. I don't know what the S stands for. It's probably there to just differentiate it from its predecessor. First off, a really big thank you to the BenQ Zowie team for letting me try this monitor out before it released. And I know there's only two people in the US that got to try this monitor out and being one of them and getting to bring you guys my thoughts and opinions on it is an honor. So thank you, BenQ Zowie. That being said, this review is completely unsponsored and unbiased. I make absolutely nothing off of any of you guys' purchases. This is strictly me just getting to test out the monitor, give you guys my honest feedback on the new upgrade, and then I have to send it back. But if you value honest reviews like this, then please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, it's greatly appreciated. And with that out of the way, let's dive right in. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna be calling the old monitor the 4.6, and I'm gonna be calling the new monitor the S. I don't wanna to spend too much time talking about everything that's pretty much identical from the old 4.6. So if you haven't seen that review or I don't go in depth enough for you as far as everything about the stand and the S switch, then you might wanna check that review out. Now I gave the old 4.6 a lot of praise in our previous review because of how well the stand is built and everything that comes with it. It's fully adjustable. You got height adjustment, tilt, pivot, it rotates. And just for tournament situations, they even have markers so that in case you have to rotate who's using the monitor, you can make notes as to where you want your height and your tilt to be. The stand itself does have a built-in carrying handle at the top. Now the inputs and outputs have stayed the same. You got DisplayPort, HDMI 2.0, regular HDMI, DVI, then your USB connection for the S switch, which we'll cover in just a second. And then on the side, we do have our retractable headset holder, as well as two USB 3.0s. Then we have a headphone out, which will not power super strong headsets, but at least it's there. And then a mic connection as well. And just like the old 4.6, you do you get your removable Zowie wings. These are actually used to prevent distractions from the side as well as possible light sources coming from the side in tournament situations. And of course we have the S switch. This little device allows us to fully navigate the menu and tweak our settings. And we can also create three custom presets. This can be configured for different games that you like to play or whether or not you're browsing the internet or watching movies. And this little device also comes in handy in tournament situations as well because all of your presets will be saved straight to the S switch. So if you're having to rotate players and teams on stage, they can simply plug in their S switch and all of their settings are a button press away. So the real major changes coming from the old 4.6 into the new S really comes into play when we're talking about the new panel that they're using and then the update to the DIAC blur reduction technology that's built in. So let's cover some specs real quick. This is a 240 hertz monitor running at a max of 1080p resolution and it is rocking a supposedly one millisecond gray to gray pixel response time. I say supposedly because they have a new panel built in. This is a fast liquid crystal display. I say it's an upgrade because these new fast liquid crystal displays are actually capable of a 0.5 millisecond gray to gray pixel response time. However, they can't advertise it as a 0.5 millisecond gray to gray response time because it doesn't achieve that consistently, although it is capable of it. So the 254 success is the 24 and a half inch version of this monitor. There is a 27 inch version that is the 2746S. Real quick, I'm gonna cover some of the natural downsides to this monitor. Essentially, TN panels really struggle to compete with IPS and VA panels when it comes to brightness ratings, color accuracy, and good viewing angles. But what they lack in those areas, they more than make up for in their speed and performance. And this is exactly why when gaming happens at its highest level of competition, where every single inch of performance matters, they're rocking TN panels on stage. So I've been rocking the old 4.6 from Zowie for going on a year now, and I got to jump into using the S to see if I could actually tell a difference with the new fast liquid crystal display, and then the update to Diac being that they're calling it Diac Plus, and that they've improved their blur reduction technology. Ooh. 
To be clear, there's absolutely no G-Sync or V-Sync using this monitor. The reason for that being is that on a competitive level, you will not see tournament players rocking G-Sync or V-Sync. It adds an ever so slight, minute amount of input lag and they will not play with it. And also more importantly, if you're getting over 160 to 170 FPS consistent, turn that G-Sync or V-Sync off. You really don't need it. Now I put a lot of time into using this monitor and I gotta say initially I struggled to be able to tell a difference. But after using it and just going back and forth, back and forth, every single time that I played and rotating throughout my gaming sessions between these two monitors, the old 4.6 and the new S, I can tell a really big difference in the DIAC performance. Now, don't get me wrong, DIAC was already amazing in the old 4.6. This blur reduction technology helps bring you the smoothest and cleanest frame transitions at extremely high frame rates and it really comes into play and shines during really fast motion frame transitions. So whether or not there's a ton of action on screen, or I'm firing fully automatic weapons and having to mitigate recoil control, or I'm getting shot in the bum and have to quickly 180 and hopefully win that gunfight, that DIAC blur reduction definitely comes into play more than you might imagine. Now besides DIAC, there are a couple key features that are important to this monitor in the settings menu. One of my favorite settings to tweak would have to be the black equalizer. This allows you to brighten the dark areas without overexposing the bright ones. Really helps for spotting enemies in dark areas. And then we have digital vibrance, which allows us to adjust the color saturation. Now I don't turn this all the way up because it will blow out the colors, but I do find it useful between 11 and 14 on the slide scale really helps to bring out the colors on those character models, making enemies easier to spot sooner. Now, I think the reason that they were able to improve Dayak was because they switched over to the new fast liquid crystal display. And I have tried out some of the best blur reduction tech coming from the new ViewSonic Elites, and this Dayak Plus definitely takes the cake. Well, I know you guys are already wondering, so what's the new cost premium gonna be coming from the old 4.6? into the new S. And the answer is zero. The new S is not gonna cost any more than the old 4.6. The old 4.6 when I bought it was $500. The new S is $500 right now. I actually asked Zowie about this, why there was no price premium coming into the new S. And the answer might shock you. The Zowie team's explanation for the new update and upgrade from the old 4.6 to the new S was that every pinch of performance matters. Now, my personal opinion on why Zowie updated this monitor is because it was time. The old 4.6 had been out for years. And also there's a bunch of new tech coming out for TN panels that are gonna be rocking 280 hertz, 300 hertz, and they're gonna have that one millisecond gray to gray response time. So the update and upgrade was really required to maintain their status as the most used best option for tournament event players. So real quick, a couple questions that I got asked from the previous 4.6 review. Is this the best monitor for console gaming? And the answer is certainly not. Consoles currently are only capable of 60 FPS, which means you only need a 60 or 75 Hertz monitor. I'm sure this question is also gonna come up. Is it worth upgrading from the old 4.6 to the new S? And me personally being an old 4.6 owner, I'm not gonna be upgrading to the new S. And the reason for me is that I'm not a competitive professional level player whatsoever. And that little performance bump isn't gonna make the biggest difference for me. Now, if you're rocking an awesome PC build and you're able to get 240 FPS, then definitely, yes, the S is worth it. And if you're looking to step up from a 60 Hertz or 144 Hertz monitor into a 240, then I think the S is definitely a worthy upgrade. And if you don't wanna take my word for it, I'm gonna link that Linus review because I freaking love Linus. And what they did is they put the old 4.6 against a bunch of the top 240 Hertz panels and made it to where the people using them would not be able to tell which monitor was which. And needless to say, the old 4.6 won by a landslide. So if you're a complete tech guru and you want all of the in-depth specs and specifics on the new S, I will have that linked in the description below. We do have some giveaways running here on our YouTube channel, which we'll be doing in our live streams, as well as our Instagram. Instagram. All socials will be linked in the description below. I do hope you guys enjoyed this no nonsense, no BS, unsponsored review of the new BenQ Zowie XL2546S. And if you did, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the content, notification squad. You guys freaking rock. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace. Oh my God, there's a bunch of people coming.